Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. Uh, I didn't bring you guys a video yesterday because uh, I had my APA match last night and uh, simply just didn't feel like making a video. I actually got home and ended up like laying down on my bed and going to bed from, from work and then I woke up at like 6.15. I had to be to the bar to play at 7 o'clock and I like to get there a little bit early to shoot a couple rounds so uh, I didn't really get around to make a, make a video yesterday but doesn't matter much because I didn't really watch the two Pacers games uh, that were played uh, the past two. Like, the West Coast games always... Because I live in New York, right? So, the West Coast games come on at like 10, 10.30 at night, and I have no ambition to watch them, okay? Like, I'm in bed by 10.30. I gotta be up at 7.30 or to work at 7.30, so I get up at like probably 5.30, uh, sometimes 4. Uh, so, like, I, I really just... I, I, it's hard for me to stay up for those games, and it's also, like, I, I don't feel like staying up for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially, it's like, the Clippers haven't been playing well. The Laker game was a little egregious, though. I, I will say that. The Laker game, I did catch bits and pieces of it, but I didn't really stay up to watch the whole thing. I watched it until, like, halftime and then decided I was going to shut it off. The free throw discrepancy in that game was fucking insane. I, I mean, like, I, I honestly... The Pacers got robbed out of that game. Like, that's that's how I feel about the Laker game. I looked at the box score after that game and just the matchup info. The fucking Lakers shot 43 free throws. And, and, and the Pacers, I think, got like 16 or 17 or some crazy shit like that. Like, I just thought that was bonkers. Like, and apparently there was a thing that happened during the game where... LeBron went and talked to a referee, and then from that point on, like, AD got fouled a whole bunch of times, and I guess, like, the Pacers didn't have, like, a, didn't get a single foul call from that point on, or some, some crazy astronomical shit like that, and that's, that's one thing I just hate about the NBA, it's like, like, I understand LeBron is, like, the golden boy of the NBA, but do we really gotta cater to him every time he, like, cries like a bitch about foul calls, like, it just, it's like, I hate shit like that because then it makes it feel like the game was rigged. You know, it's like, oh, well, LeBron went and talked to a, a ref and then all of a sudden the Pacers never got another foul call the rest of the game. You know, it just, I hate shit like that. I, it just, it makes it feel like the game's rigged. And in, in that instance, I mean, even Rick Carlisle after the game was like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, play fucking five, what, five on eight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just... That game to me felt like total robbery. Uh, you know, when I when I saw like the the free throw discrepancy and and everything like that, I just I was like, whatever. You know, and what's crazy is I think the Pacers only lost by five points. Like, it, it just it, I, I I hate shit like that. I hate the NBA for that exact reason. I understand you're trying to keep LeBron in the playoffs, but does this mean we got to give him every fucking foul call? <laughs> you know, like like literally since the All Star break, the the Los Angeles Lakers have had more free throws or more foul calls gone their way than any other team in the league. That is fucking wild to me, okay? Like, I know you want LeBron James in the playoffs, and I know having LeBron in the playoffs increases viewership, but, uh, you know, can can we fight fair? You know what I'm saying? Not every game needs to be 8 on 5, okay? Like, if LeBron's not in the playoffs one year, it's not the end of the fucking world, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they have Luka Doncic, they have Shai Gilgit, like, there's there's other superstars in the league, okay? I'm just, you know, I don't know if the NBA is actually going to see this video, but there's other superstars in the league, okay? It doesn't have to be LeBron every fucking year. So, yeah, that, that game was, was kind of shitty. I didn't watch the Clippers game. Uh, I guess Russell Westbrook came back and we still ended up beating them. The Clippers have been playing like shit. The Clippers, the Clippers have been a team that has just absolutely fallen apart since the All-Star break, it seems. Like, they got off to a good start once they got Harden. You know, it looked rough and then it looked really good and now it looks like shit again. So, I don't really know where to put the Clippers, but I feel like they're a fraudulent team. A lot of people had, like, there's guys I work with who had them winning it all, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> like, <clears throat> we know Harden's track record in the playoffs, and Paul George also in the playoffs is either hot or cold. He's either hit or miss. So, I don't necessarily know if I'd put my eggs in the Los Angeles Clippers basket to, to win it all this year, but... 
The Pacers do play Chicago tonight, and I'm very intrigued to watch this game because Pascal Siakam, in case you didn't know, has been on a fucking tear the past six games. I think he's been averaging like 25 or so points a game over the last six games. Uh, he's he's been pretty much I think I think he's been averaging like a high mid to high 20s uh, double double. Like he's been he's been balling, you know, and it's pretty funny because like. When we got Siakam, everybody's like, oh, it's a bad trade. We gave up Bruce Brown. Like, people are still tripping over Buddy Heald. It's just like, I, I, I just don't understand why Pacers fans, like, just admire players that are like, yeah, they're good for us, but are they good players as a whole? Usually not. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that are going to be free agents this year. Uh, it's just like, I, I feel like, this year, if it's not our year, next year will be. You know, like next year we can really put our hat in the ring with guys who are like in the in the contention conversation. But they played the Bulls tonight, and I just hope that we uh, put Demar Derozan in his place. Okay, like because Demar Derozan, what he did to us last time was fucking egregious. So I'm, I'm I am hoping that like there that we don't let Demar Derozan go off for like what 44 again or 45. Uh, you know, it, it just. For whatever reason, the Pacers are, are just like they have nights where it's like they, uh, like we know the defense tends to be shit, but uh, Demar Derozan going off for forty is just not. It was like I didn't expect it to be in the cards last time. I hope it's not in the cards this time. But Siakam, I'm hoping for a big game out of Siakam. You know, I, I have a parlay where I have Siakam scoring twenty five plus tonight, so I will be watching that game. But um. It, it just, we, we really down this last stretch of games really need to start winning. Uh, you know, like we, every game, like we have nine games left in the season. Right now we're sixth in the East. Uh, Orlando has a pretty solid grab on the fifth spot. We have a pretty, we have a two game spread on the sixth spot. Miami did lose last night. So that was, that was beneficial to us. Um, and it, it just, you know what, man? I don't think we're going to go much higher than where we already are. Like, we're starting to figure out, like, I think Indiana's going to be the sixth seed. Maybe we'll be the fifth seed if Orlando loses. It doesn't look like they're going to lose. Um, Right now, I believe if the playoffs started today, we'd be playing Orlando. And Orlando kind of worries me because they're actually a solid team. Like, Orlando was falling off a little bit uh, towards the second half of the season, but... Orlando is 42 and 29 right now. We are 41 and 32. Orlando is a very good defensive team. Paolo Bancaro is a fucking monster. Jalen Suggs is finally looking like a, a decent player. Franz Wagner is Franz Wagner. I mean, he's going to do what he does. Uh, but, you know, Orlando's a competent team. You know, like they're. It's funny because, like, to me, their, island, their team is like an island of misfit toys, and somehow they are the fifth seed in the East. I did not see that coming. Uh, but. You know, it's it's going to be what's going to be. I think the Clippers are playing Philadelphia tonight. So I think Philadelphia could lose, but the Clippers have been on a losing streak. If Philadelphia would lose, that would be pretty huge for us, I think. But yeah, the the, the playoffs are are like the playoff seeding is slowly starting to figure itself out. I think we're going to be like the 6th seed, maybe as high as the 5th seed and as low as 8. Um, you know, that's I think the lowest we're we're going to go. Yeah, the, the lowest we're going to go is is 8. So we're going to be in the 6th six, six through 8 range, maybe the 5th range, or, uh, you know, maybe the 5th seed, but we're going to be in the 6th through 8 range, um, which really isn't bad. You know, I, I, I want to say this. I do think this team um, met expectation this year. Um, there's Like, as we wind down here, there's really not a whole lot to talk about anymore that we already don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we already know most of the shit that's going on. Uh, but I, I will say this, Siakam has been very good. You know, that's something I did want to preface in this video. He's been playing his ass off the last six games and he's a guy shooting like almost 37% from three since we traded for him. Um, I, I am like, we're going to have to shell out a lot of money for him this off season. Unfortunately, like he's a guy that like, I think we have to keep at this point. You know, when Tyrese doesn't like, honestly, an argument can be made at the moment that if at this moment that if we did not trade for Pascal Siakam, we would be a playing team. Um, and that feels so weird saying that based on, you know, how hot of a start, you know, we had a, we've had a decent season, but 
you know, these games against Chicago, these teams against teams that are really not that great, the Detroit Pistons of the world, the, you know, the uh, Portland Trailblazers of the world, the San Antonio Spurs, okay, the Charlotte Hornets, um, <coughs> hopefully next year, these are teams that we beat a little more consistently. Um, you know, we've, we have the most losses to lottery teams out of any playoff team, and I'm really looking forward next year to, like, really putting a stamp on that and, like, just, like, like I, I, this is a team that, like, they lose games to teams that they shouldn't lose to, and they win games against teams that they probably shouldn't win, um, and, and I don't know why it works like that, but there, I'm hoping next year it gets a little more, uh, I don't know, just a little more serious, I guess you could say. I feel like a lot of the times when we played these lottery teams, we let off the gas a lot. Granted, you know, Benedict Matherin did get injured, so, you know, we don't have Ben Matherin for this playoff run, which sucks, um, but I do think he's going to come back a whole hell of a lot better. I think he's going to use the injury as motivation to, you know, be with his guys next year because I think we're going to be in the playoffs again next year. I don't see why we wouldn't be. Um, you know, losing Jalen Smith is pro- is going to suck, but you never know. He could stay. Uh, we're going to be picking up Isaiah Jackson's t- uh, team option. Very obviously, Isaiah Jackson has been very good. Uh, so, you know, Doug McDermott has actually, as of recently, been pretty good too. Uh, Doug McDermott's finally hitting shots. So I-, I don't think Doug McDermott's coming back by any means. Like, don't don't get me don't get excited about that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he comes back on a vet minimum deal. But um, these last nine games, it's like they they matter. Um, you know, th- this is the difference between, like, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I don't know what Milwaukee is at the moment. Milwaukee's the second seed. So, uh, unfortunately, um, we would have to be the ninth seed, I think, to play Milwaukee. Um, like, there's there's a handful of teams in the playoffs that I look at that I'm, like, I'm anxious, like, to, to play against. Um, it would be nice if we got Philly, which is not going to happen. I mean, we're going to be, I think we're going to be in the six through seven range. Uh, I don't think we're going to be as low as eighth. Um, I think we're maybe playing too good for that. I think Philadelphia is probably going to lose some more games. Uh, but, you know, like I, I would like to see, you know, like there's there's some teams I'm not really scared of. Um, you know, Milwaukee's one of them. Cleveland's one of them. Orlando, maybe. Um, you know, Miami's a team I kind of don't want to see. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like Miami it just becomes a different team in the playoffs. It's really weird. Um you know, the Knicks, I don't know. The the Knicks are a team that I'm just like, I I, I don't even know if they really get the upper hand on us. Like, I, like there's a lot of Knicks fans at work, and I, I got one guy who's a security guard who swears that, like, every team in the fucking East is better than us, uh, which is just wrong. I, I'm just going to call it what, like, every team that's a playoff, seed, uh, playoff team in the East he thinks is, like, better than the Pacers. I understand defensively we're not that good, but offensively, like, if Siakam and Halliburton have it going... We're the number one offense in the league. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we can put up a lot of fucking points and do it pretty fast. And I, I think Indiana is going to be a hard out. You know, uh, right now we would be playing Orlando. If we beat Orlando, I'd be pretty happy. Cleveland's a team I think we could beat as well. Cleveland has just been a team that's been really injury-riddled all season. So, I don't know, man. You know what? The We only got nine games left. Things are starting to figure themselves out about where teams are going to be in the playoffs. Um, the offseason is going to be incredibly interesting. Uh, the offseason is going to be really, really uh, kind of a nail-biter, if I'm being honest with you. We saw the whole thing with Paul George. Everybody's talking about Paul George because he, you know, we played the Clippers. We won. Halliburton did his thing. Uh, you know, PG was talking to Tyrese Halliburton after the game, and uh, I do want to say this. A lot of people are writing Paul George off like we have no shot at getting him, and I, I'm just going to say this, okay? Paul George is turning 34 very, very soon, and I think he wants to win a ring before he retires, um, and honestly, with as good as Indiana has been, we got Aaron Neesmith, we got Benedict Matherin, we got Halliburton, we got Siakam, Isaiah Jackson looks promising, we're going to get another year of Jairus Walker, uh, Andrew Nemhard has been playing better as of recently too, hopefully Andrew Nemhard starts to come around, like I'm hoping next season is way better than this season, and it, I think it should be. Uh, and Andrew Nemhard to start the season was just fucking atrocious. Um, Andrew Nemhard has quickly made his way into the conversation for best defender on the team. Uh, Aaron Neesmith is a guy that I think is in that conversation too, but Aaron Neesmith has a tendency to foul the fuck out of people. Uh, but it's just the idea. If you're Paul George, 
right, and you're looking to maybe win a ring, moving to the Eastern Conference is a whole hell of a lot easier than being in the Western Conference. And on top of that, right, Paul George has made a lot of money throughout his NBA career, okay? And I understand Paul George wants to be a Clipper. He wants to he wants to get paid by them. I don't think it's going to happen. But here's the thing, like if Paul George really wants to win a ring, like really wants to win a ring, it's not outside of the realm that he could take like a, a lower than expected contract to come play for the Pacers. Um we're really like a 3 and D wing away from being a championship contention team and Paul George is going to be on the open market. Okay. He, he is going to be an unrestricted. He's going to enter unrestricted free agency. So uh, like, I, I just feel like obviously like the odds that we get them are very, very low, but it's just the idea. Like I, I just, I just feel like this is an opportunity, not only for Paul George to like kind of redeem himself, but it's a chance for him also to win a ring. And something tells me, I, I don't know why I just got an inkling. Like something tells me that Paul George is going to come back. I, I don't know why. Like, obviously that is incredibly wishful thinking, but I just think it would do wonders for Ben Matherin's develop. I think it would do wonders for Jarris Walker's development. Um, you know, Ben Matherin's a guy who could really benefit from playing with Paul George or having him as a teammate. Same thing with Jarris Walker. And I think just having, I, I feel like just having a guy who understands what it's like to be, to, to just establish culture. Like that's, that's the main reason I want Paul George. Obviously he's a great player, but I want that, that grit that we had back in the early 2010s, right? And I feel like that's what this team is missing. And I feel like Paul George could bring that back. You know what I'm saying? I think Paul George could really like, you know, set the tone, so to speak, for this team going forward. And and we have so many young guys, like, that's why I want it. That's the main reason I want it. It's like, I know we had George Hill and George Hill was okay. Like he really wasn't great for us. We brought him back and we keep bringing guys back and bringing guys back, hoping we're going to rekindle that fire at some point. But I feel like if you truly want that to happen, you have to find a way to get Paul George in the building. Um, and I don't think it's outside of the realm. I mean, he he's had he, he loves Tyrese Halliburton. Now that we have Siakam, you can't like and the trade for Siakam was very, very good. You can't tell me that like Paul George ain't on the outside looking in, just pondering it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you can't tell me it's not on his mind a little bit. And I, I think that's all it really needs. You know, I think he just, need, you know, and I, I, I'm going to call it, I think Tyrese Halliburton is going to do some recruiting this offseason. I feel like a phone call is definitely going to be made to Paul George. I'm just going to throw that out there. You know, Pascal's, you know, uh, Tyrese Halliburton has done his job of trying to get guys to come to Indy. And, you know, um, they've, you know, welcomed Pascal Siakam with open arms. It looks like Pascal Siakam wants to stay here. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? Whether or not Paul George makes a decision on whether or not he wants to come to Indy, I think is going to be entirely on the Pascal Siakam signing. Um, if Pascal, here's, I'm just going to throw this out there, okay? If we sign Pascal Siakam to the Supermax, or not not the Supermax, but a max deal, I think it's like $240 million over five years or $235 million over five years, somewhere in that ballpark, okay? If we bring back Siakam, I think Paul George is going to want to come to Indy. Now, here's the thing. There's going to be like a telltale sign, okay? And the telltale sign here is going to be if we sign Siakam for $235 million over the next four or five years, Paul George is probably not coming. Like, Paul George is probably not going to be on the table. But, but... If Pascal Siakam takes a Julius Randle level contract, it's like, yeah, I'll come back for four years, 120 million, or five years, 130 in that ballpark. Paul George could be on the table. That's all I'm going to say. Like, watch out for the amount of that signing because if they pitch it to Siakam that, like, hey, we want to bring in Paul George also, uh, we would like to bring him back. Thing is, we'd have to offer you less money to do it. If they could somehow get a verbal confirmation from Paul George's agent that he would sign here, I don't think that's outside the realm. Like, people are talking like it's fucking crazy, but Paul George has made his money. 
Okay, I'm going to call it what it is. Paul George has made his money. He's made well over $100 million in his career. Once you make over like $20 million, it gets really hard to buy shit, okay? Uh, but the thing is, like, they, like there's nothing left to buy. But it's just the idea, like, if that's what happens, you know, like where, where they sign Siakam for less money, Paul George coming is not as far-fetched as everybody on Twitter would like to make you think it is. Um, you know, like having, like granted, yes, you wouldn't be able to sign Paul George to a max contract. Um, but you could sign him to maybe a two, three year deal that would maybe entice him enough to want to come here. And when you get a big three like that of Halliburton, Paul George and Siakam, and you still got Miles Turner, you still have Isaiah Jackson, you still have Nemhard, you still have, you know, Benedict Mathman, you still have Aaron Neesmith, you still have TJ McConnell for one more year here. Like, suddenly your team looks really, really enticing. So, it's the only reason I'm throwing that out there. It's just the idea, like, people like to write that shit off immediately as soon as you bring it up. I don't think it's, I really don't think it's impossible, you know. One thing I've learned about the NBA is nothing is impossible. And I understand with the new, uh, the new CBA, it's very hard to have three-star players on your team. But, um... You know, I think the Pacers can find a way to make it happen, especially if their roster is still relatively good and Paul George just shows interest in Indy. I I think it's I think that's all we need. You know, I think he just has to be interested. I think he just if he talks to Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam or whoever and like like I'm so, I, I'm sorry to say this cuz I I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's obvious at that point. If you have Halliburton and Siakam, you're one piece away. Like, you're one piece away from being a potential championship contender. And I just don't see how Paul George would want to walk away from that. Not with the way that the Clippers have fallen off. Like, the Clippers fell off this year. Like, I, I'm just going to call that, like, the Clippers have not had a good second half of the season since the All-Star break. We really haven't had that problem. And... I, I, I sense that Paul George is not exactly thrilled with the Los Angeles Clippers at the moment, especially with contract talks. So, and you get to come to these, get to come to these, easier conference. I like it. So, tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. I'm working on 22 minutes here. A like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. I'm out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.